They're coming. So now it's recording. Give them good beer and they'll come. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Hi. Hello, home brewers. I'm the other Charlie. My name is Charlie Finkel. And my wife, Roseanne, who's down here as a vision photographer, I've lost her now, and I are the, are the proprietors of the Pike Brewing Company. We're delighted to have all of these home brewers here. And uh, it is a particular pleasure of me to introduce a, a very old friend. Uh, he's the uh, person that, uh, you know, that Aristotle said certain uh, things that have gone down in history, and Ben Franklin said, uh, there is proof that God loves us and wants us to see us happy. But Charlie Papazian uh, created the best slogan of all, and uh, it, it adorns a lot of bumper stickers. At one time, it adorned the bumper sticker on, on my car. Relax. Uh, don't worry, have a homebrew. Woo! <laughs> so, uh, Charlie Papazian is a legend in the world of beer, not only among homebrewers, but uh, among uh, beer enthusiasts in general. Because uh, in just after Jimmy Carter signed a law making homebrewing legal in America, for an individual to brew 100 gallons of beer a year, or for a family to brew 200 gallons of beer. That was 1978. Don't get me wrong, people did a lot of home brewing prior to 1978, but it was illicit, according to the government. But, uh, but uh, when Carter signed the law, it became legal. And at that time, uh, Charlie Papazian founded the association of, over the American Home Brewers Association, which has grown over the years to become the largest association of home brewers in the world, with some 22,000 members, uh, primarily in the United States, but worldwide too. And uh, as if that wasn't the first act was not enough, most people would uh, relish in that kind of accomplishment uh, for the rest of their lives. Uh, Charlie did act number two, and that was to found what is now known as the Association of Brewers. It's a trade group that all craft brewers like ourselves belong to, and among the things that they do is an annual American uh, uh, Craft Brewers Conference, which uh, are fantastic, and every other year they do the World Beer Cup, which is the preeminent uh, beer judging uh, in the world. I've been to the great British Beer Festival, the great Canadian Beer Festival, the great American Beer Festival, for which Charlie is also a founder. And uh, none, all of them pale by comparison to the, 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 the uh, uh, world-class uh, brew. And uh, Charlie is responsible for that. And then in his spare time, Charlie has written five books about, uh, about brewing and included in those the largest selling book ever written about home brewing which is The Joy of Home Brewing, which Charlie informed me this morning that he first self-published uh, as a little pamphlet and ultimately became this huge seller. If any of you would like to have a signed copy of The Joy of Home Brewing, we have uh, the copies here, and Charlie is available to uh, sign them for you or for any friend that you want to give the ultimate uh, a gift to. So uh, it's when, when Charlie uh, uh, told me that he was thinking about having a homebrew rally here in Seattle, we were delighted to have Pike as the venue. And uh, I'm very honored to introduce my friend to all of you, Charlie Papazian. Oh, thank you, Charlie. You know, I especially want to thank Charlie and Roseanne Finkel and Pike Place Brewery uh, for hosting this event. Also want to acknowledge Kate Porter, who, who is uh, works at the American Homebrewers Association in Colorado, where we share right across the hall from each other, and also the volunteers that are the member volunteers that are uh, out there helping uh, with this rally today. And I want to get one thing straight about what Charlie had just said. I founded the American Homebrewers Association in 1978 with my friend uh, Charlie Matson. 
in Boulder, Colorado, and we had no idea homebrew was going to be legalized. I mean, that's why we founded it. We knew it was <laughs> we knew it was fun and it was worth doing, and it had nothing to do with uh, the home brewing. That home brewing was imminently going to be legalized. That was just kind of like a bonus at the time. Um, I want to thank all of you for being here and showing your support for the American Home Brewers Association. I'm, I'm looking forward to being back in this area next June for the National Home Brewers Conference. Yeah. It's been a long time coming that we have a home, brewer, home brewing event on that of national scope where, you, where uh, Washington State can uh, show off its pride and its homebrew to the nation of home brewers all around. I'm look, really looking forward to that. Um, I won't take up a lot of time up here on the stage. I want to meet several of you. I know you want to get your photographs and my autographs, etc. But I just, you know, it was 1973 that I first came to Seattle. I told a few of you this story earlier, but you know, I hitchhiked here back in 1973 to see a friend. And uh, it was an, it was a time when uh, home brewing was uh, not a huge part of my life, but yes, I was brewing at the time, and I had some home brewing aging while I was away uh, during the, that summer. Uh, but uh, Seattle has always been a special area for me in, in my life. It was, you know, uh, I grew up in New Jersey, I went to school in Virginia, and when I finally made it to the West Coast, it was. Seattle that was my first West Coast experience and I came back year after year through Seattle and I watched Seattle grow um, over many decades uh, from what it used to be and it used to be pretty wonderful then at least in my eyes and it's, and it's become much more wonderful with all the beer uh, culture that has emerged here in, uh, in the Seattle and in Washington State in the Northwest area. Uh, something special about the Northwest. You grow hops, you grow barley, you malt barley. You have a lot of people that are enthusiastic about beer, not just beer, but good beer. And uh, it's a special place in my my heart in that, uh, you know, there's a lot of areas in this country that really still, beer, beer, really good beer still hasn't emerged yet. I mean, people kind of ask me all the time, well, you know, there's over 1,700 breweries in the United States, Charlie, when is it, when is too much going to be, when is it going to be enough, you know, it's, can, can there be any more breweries, and I'll tell you, there's a lot of little towns and communities in this country that still can afford to have uh, a hometown brewery, and um, there are breweries, and people get in the business of brewing for a lot of different reasons. And they stay in the business, and you know, uh, there's a lot of businesses that people get into. And I've never met a group of people that are so passionate about what they do for a living as brewers and the people that own breweries. And it seems like the failure rate for brew clubs, the failure rate for craft brewers, small brewers is very, very low compared to most other businesses. And that's because um, there's something called will, will to succeed, and their will to succeed. Um, is much, much greater than the effort and the, the, the work involved. I mean, there, it's, that's one of the reasons that, like, you all are making great homebrew, because you have the will to make great homebrew. There's a reason, and not only because it tastes great, because you, but you share it with your friends and your community, and uh, we all contribute to a better quality of life, and that's what great beer is all about. So, um, with that, I want to thank you all again for showing up and supporting the American Home Brewers Association. Like we said, there we have 22,000 individual home brewers, but 26,000, and you include the family members, and they're all, you know, everyone in the family is a member, 26,000. And that's uh, an all time high for his number of uh, member membership in the American Home Brewers Association. And one of the very encouraging things is that people who have been members, are uh, are staying members, and there's a lot of old timers that I really appreciate. Old timers might be the guys that have been around for 10 years as home brewers and members, and some of you have been around for 30 years. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, it's encouraged to see a lot of younger people coming into the into home brewing because that's the next generation. So amongst yourselves and amongst your friends and amongst your clubs, do encourage uh, the, the next generation because. When I, when I started, I was encouraging everybody I, I could about making homebrew because 
I didn't want to drink my own beer for the rest of my life. I want to <laughs> so with that, relax, don't worry, and have a homebrew and enjoy the great hospitality here at the Pike Place Brewery.